Welcome back, it's me Lou, and I'm here for another action figure unboxing and review. Today we are looking at this, Star Wars The Black Series Cad Bane from Star Wars The Clone Wars. Now this is one of the infamous bounty hunters from the animated show from years ago. He has yet to make a live action appearance, and fingers crossed, I'm hoping he appears in The Mandalorian or The Book of Boba Fett. So in the meantime, until he appears on the small screen, let's take a look at this cool action figure. So right off the bat, as usual, he's in the new Black Series packaging. I really like uh, the black and the kind of gold. And when you look at the spine, we have some nice character artwork. And it looks like... Um, he might be, I don't have the other figures in the assortment, so I can't put together the whole scene, but it looks like he's maybe like in a canyon, because I kind of see cliffs and mountains back here, or those might be buildings, I'm not sure. Either way, it's pretty cool. It's Cad Bane. And on the back, we have another up-close portrait of him, and let's take a look at his bio. A ruthless bounty hunter from the planet Duro, Cad Bane was the preeminent blaster for hire in the galaxy at the time of the Clone Wars. No quarry was too dangerous for Bane if the price was right. So right off the bat, I love the Cad Bane character. I was so fond of his look when they first introduced him in the Clone Wars. He reminded me so much of... Um, Clint Eastwood and his old Western movies and the fact that he was from the planet Duro I just love those aliens to begin with he had the cool like I'm not sure if they were breathing apparatuses or whatever on the side of his head um, he has an awesome duster coat and then he has the hat he has kind of like the uh, cybernetic kind of looking gauntlets and he has pistols he could dual wield and even has bullets, you know, that kind of like line up his belt. So let's get this guy open and uh, see just how cool he really is. Alright, first impressions as I see him sitting in his tray. I'm excited. I think the sculpt looks beautiful. A lot of nice deep cuts and crisp detail. It's cool the way they have him um, packaged in the tray also. They have his two pistols placed off to the side. And I kind of wish they would do something more uh, with the character's placement in the trays. It'd be nice if they were posed a little bit more as opposed to just kind of laying flat in there because for one um, I'm kind of a mint unbox collector I like to keep my stuff in the packages maybe 75% of the time and I'm just I think mostly because I'm just a fond I'm very fond of really good package design and I don't necessarily fiddle around with action figures as much as I used to but it depends on the circumstance you know if I already have a shelf dedicated like Black Series and Marvel Legends, I have no problem taking them out, just like so display them. But if I could keep them in the package, I don't mind. But right off the bat, he looks great in his little plastic prison. And let's free him from it. Alright, so we have Cad Bane here. In all his plastic glory. Alright, right off the bat, one thing I should have kept track of was which side is the front of the hat. Okay, I'm guessing... Alright, so his hat, there's some paint, painted detail on one side. Uh, if you look carefully, right above the rim here, you can see a little bit of... Um, almost like a dry brushing of some light brown. 
It's almost like to give the appearance of a little bit of a dusting. So I'm assuming that this could that's probably the front of the hat. But we'll take this off for now. And there's also um his satchel. <laughs> and whenever whenever I see satchels, I always think of um Oh god, the hangover. And then you know, they're they're teasing what's his name? Uh, calling it a purse, and he's like, no, nah, it's a satchel, and, you know, Indiana Jones had one. So here's Cad Bane's his satchel. The character's name escapes me right now. I don't know. But go check it out. I love that movie, The Hangover. It's awesome. And we have Cad Bane here. His eyes, the red, it's just striking, especially under the right light. It In the contrast with the blue on his face... It really just grabs you because the, the rest of the colors, not that they're muted, but um, they're a little bit more earthy with the brown for the leather and then the gray. And then he has some dry brushing of light brown on his chest. So the contrast with the blue and the red, it this looks awesome. It really makes it pop. Oh, that's interesting. I'm, I'm not sure if I've ever noticed bef this before. So I do have a, a one of the previous Cad Bane figures, and that's the um, three and three quarters figure. But as uh, closer inspection, I never noticed that. I'm not sure how well it captures on camera, but so his head wrap on the back and around his cheeks, it's a kind of a dark green. I've never noticed that before. The sleeve detail is awesome. I look, the, so the, the sleeves, um, so the sleeves of his coat, so he's wearing a duster jacket. So there's a longer sleeve underneath, but where the bicep cut is, it cuts slightly above where the sleeve ends. So it hides it really well. And this is a cool overlapping detail. So they disguise that really well. And he still has um, the articulation in the elbow. And speaking of his arm on the forearm, he has these nice high-tech looking gauntlets. Kind of reminds me of a mix between Boba Fett's gauntlets and the gauntlet that the Predator has. Because there's like some buttons and all sorts of doohickeys. He has some nice fingerless gloves. Both with trigger fingers. As I pointed out before... He has bullets. I mean, bullets. <laughs> he has bullets that line his belt, not bullets, right? So he has bullets that line his belt. It's. I love figures that have holsters. Growing up as a kid, playing with GI Joes and Star Wars figures, it always annoyed the crap out of me. How you know, I, I all these action figures that have all these pistols and guns, but I had nowhere to keep them. But if any time back in the '80s, if in the rare cases when an action figure had a holster. I would wear the hell out of that holster. Every every figure that had one, I'd always make sure to keep its gun in there. And I want to say, I think it was um, the the old vintage um, Hoth Han Solo. He had a holster molded to his side, but you couldn't put a gun gun in there. But there was the kind of like the small little um, ring, and then I'd try to find a way to like get the pistol to f fit in there, even though it wasn't made to. Yeah, so the fact that this action figure has a holster already, you know, it's a big win in my book. Now I'm kind of curious about his legs. Um, so it looks like he has, it almost looks like chaps. Or like, because he, or these, what are those long leggings have that, it's like, when you go like fishing, and then he like, they go up to like, I don't know what they're called, like waders or something like that. So his legs look kind of funky because... He's, he has boots, and they're clearly defined here where they end, because the buckles end there. But then he has an overlay. It's almost like he has longer set of boots under him. And then you see right there where it cuts off. And then there's his, whatever, his normal pants. So it looks weird. But like if that's the design of the character, I can't really complain. And if I remember correctly, are these... It's been a while since I've seen the show. Uh, so it looks like he has boosters on his legs. So I don't remember if this allows him to fly or if those are even boosters at all. But it's a cool detail nonetheless. Um, I love the breathing apparatus or whatever the hell it is on his face. And it doesn't 
hinder the movement because it's not the back's not bolted or glued to anything. So if you want to get wild, and it looks like they plug off also, or at least the one did. Okay, cool. oh dope, they both pull off. So these both pull off, and it looks like if you're a customizer, you know, you probably just yank the head off and throw his head onto another uh, Black Series fig. And, you know, if you want like a X-Wing pilot that's from the planet Duro, you know, just go ahead and swap it out. But it's cool how this comes off. I like that. I'm just, I'm glad it's not glued on because if, I don't know. Sometimes glue it accessories over time, they kind of like, the, it kind of dries out and then stuff breaks off or falls off. So I'm really in love with the sculpt. Like I said, the detail is super crisp. Especially in his jacket. They have some nice uh, texture in his jacket. It looks really worn. Aesthetically, this is a cool character. Um, and I think he fits perfectly in something like The Mandalorian. Because they always talk about how The Mandalorian is kind of like a sci-fi western. Well, you can't get any more sci-fi than Cad Bane. And in The Mandalorian, they did that... T was it in the first season? Um... The episode where they first introduce uh, Fennec, and then she's already shot dead, and she's just laying there. And at the end of the scene, you just kind of hear that audio. That kind of—I mean, if, you, if you're familiar with it, the audio gives it away that it's Boba Fett. But at the time, you kind of just see Boots walk up to her, and there was a part of him that was kind of hoping, like, "Dude, I really hope that's Cad Bane." Because for me, I would have popped more for Cad Bane than Boba Fett. Like, Boba Fett's awesome. Don't get me wrong, but oh, you know, the Mandalorians are played out. And I just love the really alien-looking characters. So if, if they had Cad Bane in The Mandalorian initially, dude, I would have loved that. So I'm really hoping, you no know, fingers crossed, that he appears in one of the live actions, whether it's The Book of Boba Fett or, uh, the, uh, you know, an upcoming season of The Mandalorian. I'm just so fearful that um, they take the same approach with Dirge and, <laughs> you know, they just ignore him altogether because... I love Dirge from the um, Tartakovsky uh, animated Clone Wars cartoon from years ago. And I loved his appearances in the Dark Horse comics. He was a badass character. And I was so disappointed when... I don't know if it's because of the whole Disney thing or if they just decided to ignore the character altogether. But for the longest time, I kept on you know, hoping that he was going to appear in the uh, CG animated Clone Wars. But he never did. And now one of my fears is I'm kind of worried that they're never going to have uh, Cad Bane in the live action. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping at some time they have Hondo because I think at the Disney... I haven't gone to Galaxy's Edge, but I think I've seen they have like a some sort of like live action um, Hondo animatronic or something that greets you at one of the amusement rides or whatever. So it's cool that, you know, maybe at some point we might get a live action Hondo, but man, Cad Bane, he's the man. He's the guy I re I'm really rooting for that they put into the live action. So enough of me gushing about this um, his character. The figure is excellent. If I had to rate this figure numerically, right off the bat, I was going to say a 10, but 10 kind of sets the bar too high. For me, ugh, maybe an 8.5 to a 9.5. I have a bias towards this character to begin with. So, you know, the rating might seem a little high, but it's a really badass character. It's a badass figure. I, I'm kind of kicking myself that I don't have the more exclusive figure that comes with the extra accessories, like his little droid and stuff. But the retail uh, additions enough for me for now. Uh, maybe if I get, you know, if I get really boned up and want to get the other one, I'll hunt it down or something. If I can find it for a reasonable price, I don't want to pay too much for it. And speaking of Cad Bane with his satchel and his hat, um, we have this. The original, uh, I think it's the original release of Cad Bane. Now, I'm not sure if there was more than one edition of the three and three quarters figure. Because it, it's been, in all honesty, a lot of my three and three quarter figures, they're on display for the longest time. But and there was a period where I used to rotate my toys out. So any toys that were on the shelves, maybe like anywhere between three to six months, I'd take them off and swap them for some other toys. And at one point in time, I had almost all of my Star Wars three and three quarter figures on display. And that encompasses like almost everything, whether it was the vintage stuff, the modern stuff, 
Um, they were just everywhere. I'd set up small dioramas on the shelves. I had a diorama dedicated to Hoth, a diorama dedicated to Jabba's palace, a diorama dedicated to the hangar bays. Just whatever, whatever I could imagine, I just set up a diorama and keep it on display. And that's what I loved about the three and three quarter figures that they're small enough that I could set up displays with vehicles. Um, that's what I hate about these six inch figures is that I don't get me wrong. I love the six inch figures. I know everyone's boned up for the six inch figures, but they don't have the kind of like fun, like creature comforts of the smaller stuff. Like the smaller figures, they had vehicles, they had play sets, they had dioramas. It was so cool. You don't get too many stuff like that with the larger figs. Um, like the Black Series, I think we've only had like maybe a little over a handful of different vehicles, like Ray Speeder, with the Snow Speeder, with the the giant Tie Fighter, which I love. Um, and maybe we also had the what's her name, the chick from the Solo movie. We had the Cloud Rider. I don't know, was it space motorcycle or whatever? But yeah, so I mean, it was just so cool that with the smaller figs that they kind of spoiled us to death with that stuff. And at some point in time, I guess they beca became more money conscious and, you know, we didn't get as much stuff as we used to. And, and with the three and three quarter stuff kind of taking a somewhat turn for the worse, if you're a collector of them. Uh, the accessories and vehicles are far and few between, although they still kind of provide those for us, but not as much as they used to. But off, you know, pushing that aside, let's talk about this Cad Bane. So somewhere in the house, I have actually a loose one. And as I mentioned, I'm not sure if this guy saw more than one release. In my head, I want to say, I think there might have been a second Cad Bane. I don't, so, I could be wrong on that though. I got to do my, my homework again. Because um, I know with a lot of the Clone War figures, especially the animated ones, they'd see multiple releases of the same character. And... Uh, I wasn't sure if he was one of them. But either way, this three and three quarter figure is awesome also. They weren't short on like um, giving this guy some cool accessories. Because besides his dual wielding pistols, they also gave him his cool rifle. Which this guy does not have. Um, the ex I, I gotta double check and see. Because I know the, ex the exclusive one has the robot droid. I'm kind of wondering if he, if he comes with the rifle also. But anyhow, this guy is, was a nice sculpt. Um, even though this was labeled Clone Wars, around the same time, I think they're also doing, what was it called? Was it the, the Legacy Collection? And the, the packagings were kind of similar. And uh, uh, this guy, I think his amount of articulation, if I remember correctly, it looks like this guy might be a five-pointer, I think. Maybe a little bit more, because I think it's one of those cases where the elbows could move and then the arms kind of had swivel and you know the bicep rotation or whatever but it doesn't look like his knees bend but in terms of comparing the color schemes this guy actually has black pants whereas this guy has dark gray and this guy kind of has which the leather chaps make sense to me these are you know these gray chaps not so much but it's not to take away from the color scheme and this guy has a light, lighter um undershirt versus this one both great figures, though, nonetheless. And let's take a look at the back real quick. And there he is. This is this is what he looked like in the cartoon. Awesome. I love Cad Bane. So his description here is, Cad Bane is hired by Darth Sidious to break into the Jedi Temple and steal a holocron containing the secret names of future Jedi. The resourceful and cunning bounty hunter carefully puts his plan in place using schematics of the temple a techno service droid and an unscrupulous shapeshifter. All right, I vaguely remember that cartoon. It seems like a lifetime ago, but yeah. So yeah, I mean, in this wave, um, you got Anakin Skywalker, and he, I mean, these are kid friendly in a sense because he comes with a cool arm blaster and it shoots like a missile. You got Obi-Wan, which is awesome. He kind of came with that Mandalorian-like backpack. Um, and he's in his clone armor. You got clone, uh, clone Trooper Denal. Or is it Denal? I don't remember. It's been such a long time. Oh my god, I missed that so much too. Uh, like with the Black Series, we got a fair amount of Stormtroopers and Clone Troopers. And we do get the, the variants. 
but I really miss getting the specific clones. Um, you know, like we'd get Echo, we'd get Fives, Denal or Denal, whatever the hell he's called. Um, but I mean, it's cool too. I mean, nowadays we get the, the captains and the commanders, but man, I'd love some of these like lesser ranked uh, troopers. And we get another Anakin, and this is in his flight suit with the retro like Flash Gordon space helmet. And then we get the Ahsoka Tano in the flight suit also, or space suit. And it pisses me off because I had this figure. And then one day I was like babysitting my little cousin. And I thought it'd be cool to give her a Star Wars figure, you know, and I gave it to her and she loved it for like maybe a day. <laughs> and then I think like months later I went to their house and it was at the bottom of her giant toy bin. And then I couldn't find the lightsaber or the helmet. And I just felt bad because I really wish I still had this figure on display. And then I think I tried hunting it down on eBay at the time and it was like... I think like 40 or 50 bucks. Now that price might have been pretty steep because of the seller, but I was like kicking myself for just handing it off to my little cousin. God bless her. I love her, but man, I, I still wish I had that figure. So yeah, this is Cad Bane. Um, he's an awesome figure. And I can't stress enough how much I love just getting the unique aliens in the Black Series line. I'm so tired of getting all these humanoid dudes and Jedis and, you know, other characters. I want more aliens. And this is a cool representation of them. Now, I know I said this before that I kind of wished that some of the animated figures didn't take this realistic approach. And likewise, I, I would love for this guy to be a little bit more um, character model specific in terms of the CG cartoon. But the realistic detail works on him. Um, unlike, uh, which figure was it I reviewed recently? Oh, it's, I'm, I can't remember which figure was it. If you watch, if you go back a couple of videos, there was a figure I, I reviewed. Uh, and it was based, it was one of the animated figures. And I was kind of complaining that as much as I love the figure. Oh, it was a Saj Ventress. Yeah, so for as much as I like the Saj Ventress figure, I hated the fact that they try to make her look realistic. Because it's for me, it's kind of a coin toss on whether or not it works. I think the only reason why it works for me on this is because we've seen um, the aliens from Duros in live action form already. In the Cantina and, I don't know, maybe background characters. So for me to see this in a realistic form kind of works for me because we've seen this type of alien before on the big screen. I'm rambling, aren't I? Well, either how, um, awesome figure. Give him his purse. No, it's called a satchel. And this cool little cowboy hat. And you can ride off into the sunset with this guy. Go on some fun adventures. You know, if you have any of those Westworld figures that are exclusive to, like, Walgreens and Diamond Select, you could, like, you could go on, like, a Western adventure with a man in black. And he could have him a fun time at the brothels and gambling houses. So, yeah, I love Cad Bane. He's badass. He's w well worth the money and hunt him down or order him, whatever. So once again, my name is Lou. Thank you so much for joining me on my little rambling action figure adventure. I'm not the best reviewer, but I like to share my experiences and I hope you pulled something away from this. So hopefully I'll talk to you again soon. All right, take care.